Welcome. On this lesson, we will be discussing the idea of understanding congruency via congruent parts. Let's start with the question of what is congruency? Recall that congruency, it's a vocabulary word that we use to indicate when parts are equal. So two objects are said to be congruent if they are equal. So they're said to be congruent if they are equal. And so far, we have only seen two types of congruencies. We have only seen congruencies in terms of line segments and angles. Just to give an example, let's say we have a line segment. Let's say this line segment has a measurement of three. Let's call it AB. And we have another line segment over here. Uh, let's call it CD. And this line segment also has a measurement of three. Those two line segments have the same length. We can say that they are equal. So this is how we express it. AB, remember that the symbol that we use for congruency is this equal sign with a squiggly line on top of it. So AB is congruent to CD. And when it comes to angles, like if we have two angles, and they both have the same measurement, let's say 40 degrees, and let's say 40 degrees. If we call this angle A and we call this angle B, then what we can say is that angle A is congruent to angle B. So if we see the word congruent, we imply equal in length or equal with each other. But now we want to go one step further. Now, we, we don't want to just look into line segments and angles. Now, we want to take a look at big objects, circles, triangles, squares. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. How can we say that two objects are equal to each other? Let's illustrate this idea by looking at one example here. Before we start discussing this example, there is one very important idea that we need to start with. And that is that when we indicate congruency, the order matters. What do we mean by the order matters when it comes to congruency? Well, let's take a look at this direction. Here, we have that there are two objects, D, E, F, G, where D, E, F, G, we are looking at this top figure, D, E, F, G, and we have the other object, SPQR. So that's SPQR. Notice the way that we name them. We name them due to the vertices of the object. So here we are saying that these two objects are congruent. Because notice that we're using the congruency symbol. So now let's, let's pause there for a second. Because we are saying that these two objects are congruent to each other. If these two objects are congruent to each other, then we are saying that these two objects are equal to each other. And now let's think about this for a second. If I have two objects that are equal to each other, I should be able to match up equal parts. And that's where we want to take a look at example A. In example A, we want to identify corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Now, the word corresponding sides and corresponding angles it implies equal parts and equal angles or congruent parts or congruent sides and congruent angles. How are we going to be able to identify which sides are congruent and which angles are congruent? For that, we have to take a look at how we are stating the congruent statement. So the way that we have stated is that DEFG is congruent to SPQR. We have to pay attention with how we are naming those angles. Notice that D is the first letter within DEFG and S is the first letter within SPQR. So that implies that the angle D is congruent to angle S, the order matters. And if I move on to the next letter, 
the second letter is E of the first object, and the second letter is P on the second object. So that implies that angle E is congruent to angle P. This is what I mean by the order matters. And if we go one step further, then F, angle F, is congruent to angle Q. And finally, angle G is congruent to angle R. So we can start naming them. So in terms of corresponding angles, we have the following. Angle D is congruent to angle S. Angle E is congruent to angle P. Angle F is congruent to angle Q. And lastly, angle G is congruent to angle R. And now that we know which angles are congruent to each other, now we can identify corresponding sides. Because we have some sense of direction now. Because look, if I take a look into DE, we're going from the red dot to the green dot. Well, in the other figure, if I go from the red dot to the green dot, we are implying that those two sections are congruent to each other. DE is going to be congruent to PS. And notice that we can also identify that by looking at this order. The first to the second point, DE, is congruent to the first and the second point, PS. So let's state that. My first corresponding side is that DE is congruent to PS. And then we can just go kind of like in order now. We have some sense of direction now, so now we can just follow that order. So if I go from the green dot to the blue dot, if I go from the green dot to the blue dot, so that implies those two sections are congruent to each other. So EF is going to be congruent to PQ. And again, notice that that's the second and the third dot. EF is congruent to PQ. This is why I imply that the order matters. The way that we list them, it tells you which are congruent angles and which are congruent sides. So let's list that in here now. We said that EF is congruent to PQ and I'm not gonna um, highlight them but now we can just follow that order then we can see that the next one is going to be FG is going to be congruent to QR because again if we see it here FG is going to be congruent to QR and lastly the last section that we have here uh, let me see if I can list it here it's going to be G D is going to be congruent to RS. So this is how we can identify corresponding sides and corresponding angles by looking at the way that we are stating the congruency among those two objects. And now that we know which angles are congruent to which angles and which sides are congruent to which side, now we can start doing some algebra within the statements. In example B, we want to find the value of x. So let's start by seeing where is x. Within this diagram, we can see that x is within this expression, qr. Now, we know that qr is equal to gf. That is one of the corresponding sides that we found in within our list. So if they are congruent to each other, then we can just set them equal to each other. So therefore, the expression 2x minus 4 should be equal to 12. And now this becomes an algebra 1 question. If we add 4 to this, now we have 2x is equal to 16. And then if we divide by 2, we know now that x is equivalent to 8. Now if we take a look at how do we find the value of y? Well, let's see, where is y within my equation? So we can see that y, we have it as this angle, angle q, but we know 
because they are corresponding angles, that is equal to 68. If they're equal to each other, I have an equation. So therefore, 6y plus x is equal to 68. But the nice thing about it is that we know what x is equal to. x is 8. So now we have 6y plus 8 equals to 68. It would take away 8. Let's finish it up here. Now we got that 6y is equal to 60. And if we divide by 6, we get a value of 10. So notice how important it is to identify congruent sides and congruent angles, aka corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Because once you have them, now you can set equations equal to each other. There is one more idea that I would like to discuss, and that is the idea of the third angle theorem. Before we state the third angle theorem, let's actually name these triangles. So let's call this triangle ABC. And let's call this triangle DEF. What does the third angle theorem say? Well, let's say that we know that angle A is congruent to angle D. So if angle A is congruent to angle D, and also we know that angle B is congruent to angle E, angle B is congruent to angle D, E, sorry, then what can we say about angle C and angle F? Well, I know that the total sum of the interior angles within a triangle is 180 degrees. And AB is congruent to DE. So therefore, angle C should be congruent to angle F. So in other words, within two triangles, if two corresponding angles are congruent to each other, then the third angle within its own individual triangle should be congruent as well. Let's apply this idea within one example. So let's see, what do I know about this situation? So let's consider the triangle on the right, and let's try to find out the value of angle BDC. Let's start by identifying angle BDC. So here's B, here's D, and here's C. So therefore, this is the angle that we want to find information of. How can we, how can I identify the value of this angle? Well, if I take a step back, I can see that this triangle, it's made out of two individual triangles. Two triangles are overlapping to create this figure. So how about I separate those triangles and I looked at them individually. The first triangle that I do notice is triangle A, C, D. So let me just draw that triangle separately. So let's say that this is A, here's C, and here's D. So let me try to recreate that triangle. And what I want to do is I want to just copy everything that I know about this triangle. So here's A, here's C, and here's D. And let me just copy what I know about this triangle. I know that this angle A has one mark. So let me put that one mark in here. And I also know that it has a value of 45 degrees. What else do I know? I also see that within this angle D, I have two marks. So let me put them in here. And I also have a value of it, 30 degrees. And that seems to be it for that triangle. Now let me analyze the other triangle. So let me raise that. And the other triangle that we have here is B, D, C. So let me just draw the triangle individually. So here's B. Let me try to make that a little bit more straight. This is B, D, and C. And again, let me just try down what I know about this triangle. I know that angle B has one mark. So let me put that in here. And what else? I also see that angle C has two marks. So let me put them in here. And that seems to be it for this triangle. So let's pause here for a second. What are some conclusions that we can gather? Well, if we take a look at the marks, if angle A has one mark and angle B has one mark, that is implying that angle A is congruent to angle B. Whenever we are marking any kind of a figure, 
those marks that match up, we are saying that they are congruent to each other. So following that, notice that angle D has two marks and angle C has two marks. Then we are saying that angle D is congruent to angle C. Well, these triangles have three angles. And if that's the case, then we can apply the third angle theorem. Because if that is the case, then angle D should be congruent to angle C. But we do have enough information to identify the value of angle C. Because we can, we know that the summation of the interior angles is 180. So we can do 180 minus 45 minus 30, which is equivalent to 105 degrees. Due to the third angle congruency theorem, angle C is congruent to angle D. So I know that angle D has a value of 105 degrees. But what is angle D? Well, angle D, which is what we have here, is this whole angle that we have here, which notice that that's the same as angle BDC. So BDC. So we have found out the value of angle BDC. Angle BDC is equivalent to 105 degrees. We have used the third angle congruency theorem. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.